Our connection started at a homeschool co-op when way back. You were doing chainmail and stuff? Yeah, I was about 10 or 11 and I checked out this YouTube channel and I was making chainmail. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. So I grabbed some pliers, grabbed some wire, fang gone down to the garage, started making a chainmail shirt. I bought a chainmail shirt, not the real thing, but a kid's got to start somewhere, doesn't he? I don't think I'm ever going to forget when you walked in the room. Just the silence, the, the shock and awe that settled over all the kids. Actually getting to feel this fully fledged chainmail, like that's something none of us would have ever imagined getting to hold or experience. Yeah. And that like just resonated so much. Like for me, that was the moment I knew time travel was a thing. Yeah, but this isn't the first time that Connor's traveled back in time, is it? That's right, in a way. yeah. <laughs> um, my family had actually moved to Germany a couple of years before and unlike most kids, I actually had that experience of running around in castles and watching live jousting and Very archery jealous. contests. I'm sorry, I should have been there. <laughs> if I remember correctly, like we start, that's when we started working together was you guys were actually doing some short films and things like that, right? That's right. Me and my brother and a couple of friends of ours were actually making YouTube films in our mm. backyard. And after winning a couple of short film competitions, that inspired us to get a little bit more bold with our productions. We ended up doing some medieval fantasy films. That's when we learned a really important lesson. There's only so much you can get in an op shop. <laughs> the suspension of disbelief is really owed to this guy. Joel yeah. had the chainmail, he had the promise of custom made medieval pieces and in our last film you ended up doing yeah. all the costume work, all the armor. Yeah, we sort of did design sketches and came up with some cool ideas and then made all of the armor and stuff for that before I knew about historical techniques, but it was it was good fun, wasn't it? Actually I think we have some of that stuff still here in the workshop. Should we check it out? Let's definitely check it out. Okay. <laughs> Oh, these are the folders that you guys, that you want. Just the webbed look on these. Does that have like a board? Yeah. One board. You know, the rivets. It's like, what? <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> In Connor's opinion about armor. Um, yeah. In my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gotta say. After this point, our paths pretty much diverged. I went off to high school and uh, got stuck into all that's involved with that. And at the same time, I started to hone my skill from a craftsman perspective, pushing more into the historical aspects of armor making. And I did that by watching some YouTube videos, once again, from guys like Eric Dubay, the man, the myth, the legend, Armor Smith Workshop and Parker Brown. These guys, their YouTube videos were what enabled me to actually practice and emulate the processes that were there. And at that time, I also got a bit of a propane torch, my first heat source, a little bit of a burner. Didn't and, burn down the workshop. No, which is good. And that basically let me get a feel for how steel moves and what the process is behind recreating authentic and good quality armor. And those lessons have stuck with me even to this day. But That's awesome. While I was doing all of that, Connor was having some adventures off his own. Yes, <laughs> midlife crisis at 18. <laughs> Actually, for me, it was a little yeah. bit more of a, I was doing some screenwriting projects and yeah. it sort of ended up going south, yeah. for lack of better words. Yeah. That really put me in this point of life that I really wanted to live out the stories I wanted to tell. And so I ended up digging up this child ambition of mine to do archaeology. Yeah. And that brought me literally all the way to the deserts of Israel, yeah. working on this ancient uh, city, five cities squished on top of each other underneath this crusader fortress, just casually this uh, visited by Richard the Lionheart. Yeah, seriously? <laughs> so awesome. And then later going on to yeah. uh, the Caribbean and scuba diving, doing yeah. underwater excavations on the wreck of the last French warship sunk in the American Revolutionary War. As, as if like Richard the Lionheart's castle wasn't cool enough for that. <laughs> it absolutely blew my mind. And I think this is what has really ingrained that sense yeah. that history has such an incredible story to tell. And I got the honor of being a part of making history yeah. in a way. But that's exactly what our heart is here with what we do. Yeah, and like during that whole time, here in the workshop over the last three years, I started working towards building this workshop, renovating it, 
you can check out a little bit more of that, about that in a different video. But essentially, we were still having conversations throughout this entire time about dreaming of making a YouTube channel, of creating um, this, this channel where we can engage in the making of armor and the history and stuff like that. And little by little, I guess we chipped away at that, but it wasn't until the year of the great COVID pandemic that we decided, Ooh. oh, that's a great time to give making a YouTube channel a shot. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's give it a whirl right now. Very <laughs> timely. Um, yeah, we literally just launched into it. And of course we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> literally paint was still drying on the walls yeah. when we started our very first series making a great helm. Yeah, and I made about 15 of those up to that point over the last two years. So it seemed like a good place to get started for Absolutely. a YouTube series. And just for context again, yeah. just one of those great helms takes yeah. about 100 hours to make. Yeah, about 100 hours, just the helmet. Like once all the shaping and the polishing is done and the liner is sewn by hand together and then sewn into the helmet, and then all the leather working is done and the buckle is done. Boom, there we go. And that, yeah, it's been a hundred hours, all said and done. Such a learning curve for both of us. Me for my cinematography and editing. Joel for engaging such a technical process in yeah. front of the camera. And of course, growing facial hair. Well, look guys, that uh, project is still underway and don't hold your breath on that one, I don't think. But look, someone's got to do it. <laughs> that's what a team's for, right? But thank you for bringing that up, Connor. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>